Welcome to the Spotlight Series. I'm your host, Scott Nerney. It's Tuesday night, live at the Cuisine Inn. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this video, however you're seeing it. We would love for more people to hear about some of the great people who are looking to donate some of their time to our General Assembly, specifically Richard Delfino. Welcome to the Spotlight Series. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You are running for Rhode Island District Senate 25. Yes. yes. Correct? I am. And it's, um, looking forward to the opportunity to uh, get back into the uh, public life and knock on doors and do some real good for the people of the town of Johnston. Okay. Tell us a little bit about yourself, your personal background, career, and sure, sure. non-political side first. Yeah, so um, fifth generation um, Delfino that grew up in the Simmonsville area of the town of Johnston, uh, where we're proud to have uh, contributed to community and worked hard in the community and uh, for, for many, many decades. Um, so I'm 37, I'm a graduate of Providence College, and uh, I've had the opportunity to actually, in the professional life, work for the past three governors, uh, starting with Governor Chafee back in 2012 as the legislative liaison, continued under Governor Raimondo, and uh, most recently as the Director of Municipal Affairs under Governor Dan McKee. Uh, it was about a year ago, March, I took a position over at Tri-County Community Action Agency as the Legislative and Community Affairs Director, um, a role that I, I was very passionate about and good work that I'm, that I'm doing. Um, prior to that, I spent two terms on the Johnston Town Council representing the people of District 1. I am a member of the Johnston Democratic Town Committee and currently serve on a number of boards and commissions uh, in, my, in my spare time, I'm the chair of the Johnson Smithfield Juvenile Hearing Board, where juveniles who um, are in trouble come before the police department, are arrested and come before the Juvenile Hearing Board and are given an opportunity to do some work in the community um, as of a second chance uh, deterrent as, as opposed to going to, uh, through the court system. Uh, I'm a volunteer youth sports coach in, in the town. I'm a member of the executive board of the Johnston Little League, a great organization that uh, works very hard to make sure kids are, kids are playing baseball. And um, a couple of the professional uh, boards that I'm on, I'm on the Governor's Workforce Board, Local Area Advisory Council, Roger Williams University Paralegal Advisory Board, uh, as well as a member of the, the oldest Itlow American club in the, in the country, the uh, Itlow American Club of Rhode Island, which uh, is a great organization that I'm happy to be a part of. So, um, and I have three wonderful young boys who keep me very active and uh, enjoy spending a lot of time with them. So. so between all that, you're going to squeeze in being a state senator? I am. I'm going to find time. I, I've always had a call to... Uh, public service and um, have an opportunity to continue that here. Too. So tell us a little bit about District 25. Who are they? So District 25 is made up primarily of uh, almost the entire town of Johnston, a little sliver of it cut out. Um, but the people of the town of Johnston are hardworking, uh, principled, valued people who whose families have you know, we've seen parents and, and children my age who now are raising their families. And it's a great community that, you know, like I said, I'm a fifth generation uh, of Simmonsville. And, you know, back in the 1800s, the Italian immigrants came here and um, some of them settled in Simmonsville, like my family. And uh, like today, Johnson's becoming more and more diverse. You have uh, different populations, whether that be Hispanic or um, African American, and uh, you know we have wonderful Italian culture as well. So uh, it's becoming very diverse, but it's very family oriented, very value oriented, and hardworking middle class folks. So if I walked around Johnston right now, what would I hear? Are their top two or three things that they feel members of Smith Hill could affect change in their lives. Yeah, so a lot of it has to do. I think all three of them. Well, two of them have to do with quality of life issues, ensuring that uh, infrastructure is being kept, whether it's roads, whether it's bridges, whether it's, it's lights. Um, and a lot of that work uh, would be continued when I was on the council. It was things that people see every single day that, that affect them 
that make their lives live, work, and play in the community um, top of the list. So it's ensuring that being responsive to the needs of the individuals, of the families, ensuring the infrastructure needs are met, the public safety is paramount, you know, supporting our police, fire, teachers, ensuring they have the need, they have the tools they need to be successful in their their careers as well. One of the one of the uh, questions I posed to someone last year when we did a lot of political interviews was, the answer was, people need to see government works for them. And I think that's really what you're saying is even from the state level, a lot of people think of you know it's it's not really affecting my individual town, but a lot of what the state legislature does comes to the town through money or through laws that are really helping the towns be better. Is that, is that what you're looking sure. for? Sure, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's critical that people that we elect to public office understand the needs of the community that they're serving. And part of that understanding is being present and visible and responsive to those people that you serve. And I think being involved like I am in so many different community organizations, understanding what the family needs are of those people will help me be successful in, in supporting common sense legislation, ensuring the town is getting the funding it needs on uh, from the state level to, to make sure that government is, as you said, working on behalf of the people. So talk to a little bit about your experience with the city council where you may be representing this part of Johnston and there's two or three other people who may not have a vested interest in whatever you're trying to propose in that part of the town, which isn't really helpful to them. And how does, the, how does your skill set that you've experienced through terms there relate to now if you're in the Senate and you're trying to work on a proposal to help Johnston, but someone in Narragansett or Westerly or Cranston has no dog in the fight, as they say. Yeah. How do you work together with those folks? So that's the, that's a great question. My responsibility, and, and I would say this um, to anyone that asks, my responsibility is the people of the town of Johnston. They will be first and foremost on the on the front of my mind with any legislation that comes before us, and and that's my that's my take. Sure, we have to work with our colleagues, and I'm happy to do that. And uh, Democrat, Republican, Cranston, are against it, Woonsocket. Um, you know, I've, I've got to work with a lot of those folks over the years and they're passionate about their communities as well. And, um, you know, understanding the need, but, um, every piece of legislation that I would support vote on, uh, would be with the best interest of the people of town of Johnston first okay. and foremost. And I'm going to call you a newcomer cause you're yeah. not already in office with some political experience, but how does a newcomer get assigned to a desk and actually make their voice heard? Sure. So I, I was, uh, I'm glad you alluded to the fact that I'm um, not necessarily a newcomer because um, that was the answer to the question. I'm, I'm actually not. Um, I've spent, uh, as I mentioned, three uh, administrations in the state house working closely on legislation, advising governors on signing bills versus vetoing bills, working to see how legislation is being proposed from each of the state departments. Uh, when you talk about accessibility, uh, I have a great relationship with the administration, including the department directors. So when I get a constituent request out, I'm going to be able to point them in the right direction immediately because of my experience working in the state house and also my experience working as a, as a member of, uh, of the council. And, and talk a little bit about who you're replacing and is said sure. continuing that past work or is it something fresh or a combination of the two? Sure. So Senator Lombardo was a great advocate for the people of the town of Johnston. Uh, I worked very closely with him when I was a member of the town council. Uh, and he, he was very responsive to uh, the people and the needs of, of, of the people of the district. And especially when it came to elderly and veterans. And certainly going to continue on that path of ensuring that our elderly and our veterans are taken care of. And, and with that, also have some new ideas as to how we can um, make improvements to the quality of life for the people of the residents of District 25. Okay. So explain this on your website. I saw common sense Kennedy-like Democrats. Sure. So uh, 
President Kennedy, probably my favorite president, uh, he, he has a quote that said, let us, not, let us choose not the Democratic answer nor the Republican answer, but let us choose the right answer. And that quote sticks out to me because the D in front of your name, the R in front of your name, or the I, whatever it may be, doesn't signify who the actual person is. And my values, hardworking, community engagement, community involvement, uh, keeping with those traditions of the hardworking families of the town of Johnston, it's critical now more than ever that we, we choose the right answer. And the right answer, in my mind, will be the one that benefits the people of the town of Johnston. Uh, but, but Kennedy goes on to talk about a few other things. I was a history major at Providence College, so uh, I like to dwell on some of these things a little more. But it, there's a great section in the Profiles of Courage where he talks about a senator sitting there and he relates it to Edgar Allan Poe in, in The Raven talking about the poem and how you're sitting there and you have to make a decision that, you know, there may be people that have a point on the other side or maybe a compromise might serve better, but you're in a position when the roll call comes that you have to make a decision and you have to vote and, and that's a decision that you have to make for your, your political career and the people that you know that elect you to office and, and it's so important and um he goes on to talk you know he quotes the the poet dante the great italian poet where he says you know neutrality in the in the times of, of facing moral decision making you know there's a place in hell for those people so it's it's now more than ever that we need a person in the senate that is going to be responsive a strong advocate for the people of town johnson that's not going to be neutral that's going to have to make hard decisions and i'm prepared to do so how can people get more information about your campaign yeah great so um i have a website it's delfino for senate.com i'm on uh facebook richard delfino uh, Rhode island senate district 25 and also via email delfino for senate uh, at gmail.com that's going to be a big election year with a presidential election, and you know, there'll be a lot of people at the polls, and I hope a lot of them are voting for you. They keep the uh, work of Senator Lombardo going. Sure, and um, like I do with every uh, discussion I have, I, I ask for your support come September, and look forward to meeting you as I, I knock on doors and, and talk with members of the community. All right. Thank you very much for coming Thank on you. Spotlight. Thanks for having me.